Okay. So let's see if my slides are up. So what about in 2D? Let's try to come up with a 2D mathematical definition of strain. All right, so we're going to say, kind of using our same engineering strain type analogy, we're going to say that the strain in the x direction, if I have this two-dimensional cube, and I apply some strain in the x direction, then the, the what's equivalent to the engineering strain, the change in length over original length, right, would be the length of the line segment, right, the length of the line segment AB minus the length of the line segment AB capital over AB capital, right? That's sort of our following the definition of engineering strain, right? So, as you can see here, the length of capital AB is dx, right? So this is some infinitesimally small square, okay? So I can rewrite this, AB, the length of AB minus dx over dx. And that's equal to AB minus 1, right? AB over DX minus 1. So then I can, let, let's solve this <coughs> equation for AB. So if we do that, we have AB is equal to Now, the length of AB right, if, if the magnitude of AB, if AB a, is a vector, is something like the square root of the components. AB in the x direction squared plus AB in the y direction squared, right? Well, AB in the x direction is really just the vector component BX minus AX, right? And if we just look at, I don't know if you guys can see those, those labels uh, well enough, but B in the x direction is U <coughs> plus dx. So this distance is U, okay? So I go that distance, then this distance is dx, so u plus dx plus this distance here, which is du dx dx, All right? So plus partial u partial x dx, and then a in the x direction is u, so minus u, right? So the u's cancel. So I have dx plus du dx dx. Right. 
a b in the y direction right, is just b the y component of b minus the y component of a which is v plus partial u sorry partial v dx times dx minus v and the v's cancel All right so then I have dv dx dx. All right. So I have this guy and this guy, and I'm going to plug that in there and plug that in there. Okay. And then if you'll notice, this is I want to plug in back over here right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of this equation to get rid of that square root right so I'm going to square this I'm going to square that so that gets rid of the square root and then over here I need to square both sides if I'm going to set them equal to one another so I'm going to square this I'm going to square this okay and so the magnitude of AB squared is just this, you know, it's just this squared plus this squared. And then on this side, I have, I'm going to square this whole thing. I have e to the x squared plus 2e to the x epsilon to the x plus 1. All right, so that's the right-hand side squared. And then if I have dx plus partial u partial x dx, that whole thing squared plus partial v partial x dx that whole thing squared that's equal to 1 plus 2 partial u partial x plus partial u partial x squared plus partial v partial x squared. <clears throat> All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the strains are small. Yeah. You mean this? Why is this U? Because, we're, so the capital A, B, C, D is in the, say, undeformed configuration, right? Reference configuration. And we can then move it around. We can translate it and strain it at the same time, okay? But when we compute the strain, we only want to compute the change in length of the line segments. We want to take the translation out. So that's just, you can... You can translate and strain at the same time, right? When you when you measure uh, when you measure these are called kinematics, right? When, when you measure kinematics, you you don't always. I mean, just for a measurement, you measure displacement. A point was here, and now it's here. And going from here to here could include displacement. It could could include deformation and translation just rigid body translation, right? And you need to take the rigid body translation out to define strain, okay? So basically what we have now, you know, 
this thing is equal to this thing because this thing is the magnitude AB squared, okay? And now we're just going to make the assumption that the strains are small, okay? And, and so because, or I'm sorry, we're going to make the assumption that the displacements are small. And, and what I mean by small, we'll use the definition of small is that like any gradient of U is much, much less than 1, okay? And so with that, all of these higher order terms cancel, right? And we're left with um, we're left with two e to the x plus one equal to two partial u partial x plus one. All right. We'll simplify that equation. And we have that. So it's consistent with our 1D def definition. Right? But that's just one strain. That's the strain in the x direction. Right? There's also a strain in the y direction. Okay? And if we were to work through all the details, I'll spare you that. But if we were to work through all the details, what we'd get is that you'd have partial V, partial Y is the strain in the y direction. So U is the displacement in the x direction. V is the displacement in the y direction. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So those are the two kind of normal strains. I'm going to clear this off. And for reasons that will be clear in a minute, I'm going to define this angle as 2 sigma x y. So this is the shear strain. Okay. And 2 sigma x y is equal to alpha minus beta. So this is alpha, this is minus beta. Okay. So two alpha minus beta. And we can write alpha, right? Alpha is this angle, so it's just the tangent of opposite over adjacent, right? So alpha is the tangent of partial v, partial x dx over dx plus du dx dx. So all that is is this is, you know, it's it's trig, right? This is opposite. The, the numerator is the opposite. You know, du, d, um, I'm sorry, dv dx, dx, and this is dx, dx, plus du, dx, dx, okay? Adjacent. <clears throat> All right? So, going back to our notion of small, you can also say that for any small alpha, then the tangent of alpha is approximately equal to alpha. So if alpha is small, the tangent of alpha is approximately alpha. And, the, and so from that, then therefore, alpha is approximately equal to what's inside that, right? So
Okay. And if we simplify this, we get partial v partial x over 1 plus partial u partial x. Okay. Now, what did I say about our definition of small? I said that any grad u is much, much less than 1. So if, if this term is small compared to 1, I can neglect it. Right? And I'm left with alpha partial v partial x. Okay. So then likewise, beta is equal to minus partial u partial y. All right, I'm sparing you the details, but it's the same just geometry. Right? And so then finally, I have that 2 sigma xy is equal to partial u partial y plus partial v partial x or sigma xy is equal to one half 2u partial y plus 2v partial x. All right. Now I know that the q is still a curiosity at the moment, but it, it won't be in just a second.